uh, ready for for the for the presentations. Okay, so uh, let me welcome all of you. Welcome very much, uh, everybody, for the um, second international conference in distributed sensing and intelligent systems, which is held in these two days. And uh, I would like to welcome you in the session one for the, all the lovely papers is gonna, uh, are going to be presenting in this session. The first paper in our list is the topic is uh, eradicating physical security concerns by using blockchain technology. Uh, the authors for this papers, anyone are here to present um, the paper? So let's hand over to the second one, as no anyone respond to this one. The second paper, the title is Eval uh, Evaluation of a Blockchain-Enabled Multi-Energy Transaction System for District Energy Platforms. The author is, there is a uh, solo author, his name, Andre. Andre is here. I don't think so. He is here uh, until he is coming to the session. We will uh, allow him to present his paper. The third paper um, entitled is Security Threats Intercept Intercepted by the Integrated I um, Identifications and IPs in the Cisco Unified Wireless Network. Uh, observation and uh, reflections during COVID-19 period. The authors, uh, Tahseen, Ahmed, and Saeed. Yes, I can uh, see Tahseen. Uh, I'm going to present uh, the paper. Okay, Dr. Tahseen, you are very welcome. And uh, go ahead for your, for your presentation. Yes, sorry. Yes, uh, me and my colleagues, uh, Dr. Tahseen here. I'm Dr. Ahmed uh, Masri. Sure. And, uh, Dr. Tahseen, so we- Very welcome, Dr. We will, uh, to, together we will present it, but I will start the presentation. No worries. I'll just uh, share my screen. Uh, just before you start, uh, Dr. Ahmed, uh, just very quick notes for everyone. You have 10 minutes for presentations uh, and five minutes for uh, answering and questions. Uh, questions and answer. Okay, thank you very much. Just checking. Okay. So welcome everyone and uh, very good afternoon in our uh, Dubai time. Um, we're going to present uh, today our title, which is about security threats, uh, anticipated uh, identification detection and uh, integrated also prevention system uh, by Cisco Unified Wireless Network. So uh, we will start with the introduction, brief introduction about uh, the system itself, and then how do we identify the problem uh, then the network uh, architecture will be explained in the method, during the method, and we will conclude with the uh, result discussion and recommendation. So uh, to just have an idea about uh, the detection system, the intrusion detection system and the intrusion prevention system, these two systems are widely used by 
uh, Cisco Unified Wireless Network. And that's the reason why we have uh, specified this study about uh, Cisco because uh, it's the beautiful uh, uh, the beautiful two both system which is IDS and IPS are available in uh, in such network. And here we have uh, a lot of data flow. Uh, if we if we just monitor the traffic flow through the system through these two uh, prevention security systems or using one software, we can see how much uh, how much uh, how, ma how many attacks being uh, detected and being prevented by uh, Cisco uh, network or Cisco devices. So uh, the, the architecture uh, provide, provide a security agent <clears throat> by itself using uh, network access control applications, intrusion prevention system, and intrusion detection systems. Uh, these are available at the administration level uh, of, uh, <clears throat> of, this, of the network uh, person or the network, let's say, IT guy who, uh, who has a control or access into um, the Active Directories of, uh, of Cisco uh, security agents. So the current studies focus on only IPS and uh, IDS enhancements. However, uh, there is no existence research uh, show us or share with us what is going on or a, a, a pure analysis on the network traffic, how many viruses, what kind of virus has been, been uh, detected and how these uh, two um, to, to, I mean, two different algorithms can help our network or can provide a unique prevention or on the security level. So the objectives here come out with uh, determining the value of the threats and the tax uh, during the COVID-19 because this is that it takes, uh, we collected the data for six months, almost six months and start studying these data. And you, we use the data during the COVID-19 in our university campus to see how, um, how this has been affected with the COVID-19. As, as all of us, we know that uh, during the COVID-19, uh, almost all the universities have uh, been moved to online, uh, online uh, studies and online uh, platforms. And uh, we come out with something called lockdown. So students are not going to the campus anymore. So the, the number of usage, if we, if we are going to consider only Cisco uh, local network uh, should be less by, by all means. I mean, less users because of uh, no students on the campus. Uh, however, the faculty members are still going to the campus. So that's why we still have some usage. So this is a good opportunity to uh, purely focus on um, some reliable access, which is we consider faculty members as uh, reliable access because usually they have a privilege on the students. And we will see that during our uh, categories and classifications. So how we can strain the security, this will come with the second objective, how the, the, the security will be measured and what kind of uh, recommendation and guidelines should be taken to reduce the risk. So uh, the architecture in, 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 the, in the campus, it's uh, in this way, it's being built in, um, in following uh, Cisco architecture. Uh, we can see that the, the down there at the, at the lower or at the bottom um, of, of, of uh, the last layer down there, uh, which is uh, connecting to the end users. So uh, these are routers connected in the seal roof of, um, all the campus, actually there are hundreds of these routers. So the users, when he's going from uh, one range to another range, he won't feel that, uh, or he will have a continuous connections with, uh, with the network. So he won't feel there's something uh, happening. This will, with the students or with any staff uh, working within uh, mobile devices. So we will also monitor that. So we need to monitor also the uh, mobile devices, not only laptops or um, fixed devices in the offices or in the labs. So that's give us another indications or another uh, privilege on analyzing uh, some Android attacks or let's say iOS 
uh, movement network traffic to see what's going on on the network side. Furthermore, we have uh, another connection. So that was the, this was the local network. This is the, lo the local network. And here we still have a connection to outsiders. Uh, however, we use, all, we use only for backup. We use this, uh, we don't have another branch, which, but we still have uh, servers outside the, the campus where the data is also uh, being backed up at, the, at, at another place, another location. So uh, this is a, a very close up uh, diagram. This is not exactly the diagram as uh, I couldn't share it here it's, as it's considered as confidential information. So this is a very similar um, background. So the headquarter here we don't have, but we still have uh, servers in other locations. If we take the, the, the restrictions and how much uh, access the employees they have. So for example, here, employee A, which has a higher privilege, uh, here we consider as faculties, uh, admin staff, all these people will have a privilege of a little bit more or less restricted access. So what they can do, what they cannot do. They cannot, for example, here install softwares. So even faculty members or admin staff, they cannot install uh, softwares or apps um, in their uh, devices. If they are using the university devices, if they are using the, their personal devices, then this will be allowed. This will be allowed. So this is uh, one one thing that I have to uh, to mention. So that's one of the reasons why we consider only local networks. So we can really get a pure uh, classifications on what's going on on our local network. Employee B, which uh, here we have another uh, category, uh, which is actually considered as a student. So these are most of uh, category B are actually students where they cannot uh, share files. So they don't have access to the share file. Whether employees, uh, faculty members, they can share with each other files. They have a share folder, uh, one, uh, I mean, virtual place where they can share all their files together. They can print, they can have access to the printers, to the other devices, to the labs, and all of this from their offices. So the students, they cannot do that. They don't have access to the LAN network. So this is one of, uh, of uh, another things. So they don't have access even to the wireless when they want to share files. They only, they only can uh, access internet and play with, with, with whatever software is uh, available in the computers, in the labs. We disable the LAN network because uh, we consider LAN network as uh, at risk because here uh, students, they might get access to um, the active directories in, in the employee A because we are using the same server, not different servers, not separated ones. So that's why uh, disabling the LAN network from all uh, the campus, around the campus, all the walls being disconnected and being replaced by wireless network in order to have uh, privilege on only uh, Cisco uh, network. So we don't have any LAN because we're only focusing on wireless network here. We have another category, which is uh, the visitors, which basically they have uh, very, very limited access. It's only uh, accessing the, um, the internet. So they, they can't do anything actually except accessing the internet. And also the internet is not everything has been accessed. There's like a wish list, uh, there's a website being blocked and a lot of other stuff. If we look to the numbers during the COVID-19 and the number in normal days. So um, looking to employee, we have around uh, 271. During the COVID-19 lockdown, there are like two or three months, uh, faculty members also was not being able to reach the campus. So we're going to also focus on this. So this will be considered as COVID-19 uh, period. Uh, they have a, a high speed internet access, whether the students, you can see we have around 2000 uh, students, uh, during the COVID-19, there's no any access to any students to the campus. So they don't have access to the local network, wireless, local wireless network. Uh, guests, we have some uh, guests, which uh, we can see here, very uh, few uh, numbers. So we're going to take these two um, comparison to see what's going on. So the, the number, what type of attack we're we are, we are looking for, uh, we're not looking for every um, every uh, single attack like uh, APT attacks, but 
here we're only focusing on the attacks being detected by the Cisco uh, agency. Uh, so they have something called DPI blocks, they have viruses, they have intrusions, they have spywares. So these data are being collected or just focusing on the type of, um, uh, of uh, detection system, what we can detect, what we cannot detect. If we look to uh, the intrusion uh, prevention system, we can see that uh, in September, where it was uh, purely locked down, October purely locked down, in November, they start, the faculty member starts going to the campus. So that's why uh, we can see they had the, 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 the intrusion prevention system start being activated more than uh, October and September. If we go back to the six months back, so we can see uh, during May and uh, June, so all these periods actually, the students, they don't have access to the campus all the six months, students they don't have access. So here we are talking about only um, category A, which they have a privilege on um, share files, uh, having access, full access to the internet uh, websites, uh, softwares, they have, um, they can share um, applications, but they cannot install applications, for example. So we can see that uh, also um, the, the, the number of, uh, of, uh, viruses or of attacks hits, it's actually a lot. It's still a lot. So we cannot say that um, because nobody in the campus, we should not look to what is going on. And these, by the way, these all these attacks uh, has to be not only monitored and detected by the system itself, but it has to be approved uh, at the final stage from the uh, system administrator. So the system administrator still have a big role here to uh, have a look into what is going on. So we don't say like, there is nobody in the campus. Oh, uh, I don't have any, I don't have to worry about the network. Uh, even it's a local network. It's not being accessed by the uh, outsider, but still we have a high number of uh, preventions, not like normal days, but still quite, the number is quite high. So we can say uh, that uh, the IPS system and uh, IDS system by Cisco system is shows a good, uh, promising, reliable system. However, uh, we still have to do some uh, work at, um, at uh, the administration, network administrators. They have to still uh, keep all their eye on the security and they still have to adjust the policy and, and uh, they have to adjust the, the policy and privacy control and to see what, what kind of viruses they have to add to the system. Uh, or to the provision system, because all these actually numbers being uh, detected by, uh, like by, by, by the administrator himself and they has put it in the block list. So in the future, we will have less attacks. Uh, we have some other kind of attacks, but unfortunately I cannot share it here. It's kind of uh, confidential. They consider as confidential uh, because the system administrator has to put this as a block list and then they have to uh, take an immediate action. So it means that review the network strength and weakness of Cisco is still uh, taking a big role and to adjust the configurations and also has to look to the footprints of the attacks and to see what kind of attacks, what kind of IP addresses these attacks are coming. The next future work uh, will be uh, very useful. If we try to consider the machine learning uh, at this stage, it will be much useful because here uh, the machine learning now can have a beautiful patterns and see what kind of uh, threats from which IP it's coming and then how how we can prevent, how we can um, build a, a new system where we can have what we call corrective actions. So uh, to prevent threats more, um, we, can, we can build a machine learning system taking all this data from the IPS and IDS system and link it with the corrective action. We build a new database which can be used for the machine learning. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed, for your nice presentation and nice work in this paper. Thank so you. now the questions are opening for the uh, for this paper to Dr. Ahmed. Any questions? <laughs> If anyone has any question, he can ask regarding this paper.
Well, I I think no any questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed, you. and for all the authors are uh, working this uh, paper. Now we're gonna move on the next one. Uh, the next paper is uh, entitled Teleco Telemedicine and Smart System Techniques for COVID-19, a Systematic Review uh, by Dr. Ibrahim, Mohammed, and Zahra. Yes, Dr. Yes, Dr. Zahra, you are very welcome. And you can share your screen and go ahead for your presentation. Good luck. Okay. Sorry, uh, we don't hear anything, actually, just a noise. Uh, is it just with me or everyone? What, uh, doctor? Yes, now we can hear it. Okay. She, she doesn't start yet. Okay. I'm here uh, speaking about uh, some aspects to COVID-19, such as claim can characterize risk factors of this or general treatment. Also, uh, we speak about the comparison between first and second wave of COVID, is the role of um, modern technology for fighting COVID-19, such as in order to sense blockchain with data analysis and mobile applications. Also, the role of AI in fighting COVID, like the role of deep learning, uh, and finally, the conclusion. Doctor, I don't uh, think we can uh, hear here. Me. Uh, can you j please check your mic because we couldn't, we cannot hear your voice. Yeah, and now, doctor. Now is clear, but try please to be in clear mode, please. Okay. Um, you like to begin from the first? Yeah. Okay, from the first. Go ahead. Um, okay. Uh, this be upon you. I hope you are fine. We will talk about our paper in a brief. The paper titled Telemedicine and Smart System Techniques for COVID-19, a Systematic Review, written by Dr. Ibrahim Hassanun and Dr. Muhammad al Hussein and Zara Atari. Paper with number 64. Uh, here uh, we speak about the topics. Uh, the paper handled some aspects related to COVID. Um, some are medical issue and some are technical issue. Medical issue like uh, clinical characteristics, characteristics and risk factor and general treatment. And um, the technical issue are the rule of technology like in order of sense and machine learning and artificial intelligence in part of COVID. Uh, as we know, the general uh, symptom of pandemic like cough, fever, shortness of breath and sore throat and other common symptoms and the general precaution are the hand wash, use ball, and wear masks and applying long uh, distance. Here we'll uh, present a comprehensive study about COVID-19, the are medical tests and technical tests. The medical issues starting from clinical um, classification of COVID as there are four stages. Here, four stages for um, a classification. The first is main cases for light infection, and second is moderate cases for a medium infection, and third is uh, severe cases for um, um, the fall infection, and the fourth is critical cases for the period of infection. Also, we have here the clinical characteristics uh, as a pathological characteristic, like interval of distribution, um, we laboratory and laboratory characteristics and gradual uh, characteristics like the chicken CT and uh, X-ray for pandemic detection. 
here we have some general um, treatment, uh, some general medicines for uh, treat COVID-19. Here we have risk factors for this, such as each other's children, vegan, gender, and medical uh, comorbidities to smoking, uh, obesity, and complications. And finally, we speak about modern technology against COVID-19, such as uh, IoT and internet of science, blockchain, big data, analytic, and mobile applications, and the rule of AI, such as machine learning and uh, deep learning. Here we uh, discuss a comparison between first wave and second wave of COVID, and this comparison can be applied for further waves uh, as third and fourth waves of infection. Factors we use here for uh, comparison are symptoms about um, the two uh, waves and first appear confirmed uh, cases, difference between coronavirus and flu, factors that can affect the level of risk and catch if we can catch it twice and rotation. Uh, first, when we search about symptoms about uh, of the two um, waves, we found that uh, approximately the same symptoms between the two COVID-19. When we search about first appeared and confirmed cases, we found the speed of virus speed and the severity of COVID-19. The difference between coronavirus and the flu, we found that the post symptom commonly include high temperature, um, body aches, and other symptoms. Factors that can affect level of risk, even those we found that uh, even those with an um, underlying heart or a circulatory condition make up a recovery from coronavirus. If we catch it twice and the mutation, we found that COVID-19 mutated and multiplied quickly. That's why we can catch follow virus again uh, each year. Result from this comparison, we found that the many countries uh, have seen two phase cycle of coronavirus. And uh, we have nowadays three and uh, four cycle of the virus. Also, they have been such of age group and this coronavirus, but the comparative features of the different waves are largely unclear. Here, uh, some, there are some statistics about uh, confirmed and recovered and um, this cases in the top 10 countries infected by COVID. Uh, here we have USA is the most uh, large country which I have more affected and there are, uh, these are the rest um, countries affected by this Canada. Now we'll talk a review about related work of these people. Uh, here there are some studies related to COVID infection such as we have here a uh, colloquy discuss the relation between a pre-existing um, cardiovascular converted and the COVID-19. Um, here we have um, John Young conduct a review that um, obviously has been linked to uh, the increase in COVID infections. Uh, Jonas Ludo Gerson presented a comprehensive study that uh, children may have lower probability um, uh, with infections. Uh, we have here uh, Hu Chang inducted that COVID patients with cancer have a greater chance of this with that uh, rather than patients without it. Cedric um, O'Neill showed that elderly patients have more symptoms than young patients. Here, uh, two and others discuss the effect of smoking, effect of smoking uh, on COVID infection. Malik Salam uh, discussed or um, presented the wide range of vaccine approval and risk across region of the group. And finally, we have here uh, Tubiki focused on the drugs used to treat COVID uh, patients. Uh, here we discuss the technical function of the COVID in this paper. Here, there are several medicine instruments for fighting against the COVID pandemic, but to reach the full promise of telemedicine, uh, that telemedicine system should combine with other innovations, such as robots, uh, drones, a smart um, wearable, 4G for um, ambulance, uh, all this for online uh, consultation with uh, over different mobile applications, all this to arrive to the top benefits of the telemedicine. There is an immediate need to get a better uh, understanding of positions that information management of uh, and innovation research will play in combating this disease or free. This figure shows 
is some of modern technology to fight COVID, to fight against COVID, such as artificial intelligence, contact tracking applications, mobile applications, big data analytics. 3D printing technology, blockchain, in a lot of sense, and robots. We focused in this paper on the most popular techniques for fighting COVID-19 as in a lot of sense and using sensor for measure temperature or detect any infections. We have here blockchain technology and security about information of infected patients. Here we have big data analytics for classifying individuals who need quarantine based on travel records or accelerate the production of antiviral drugs, vaccines, and awareness of COVID distribution over time and space. And finally, we have mobile applications for monitoring the states of infected patients and improving care for these patients. Here we have the, the rule of I, as the I is being used to help with the different facets of, uh, of COVID uh, situations, including uh, epidemiologically, genetic research and drug production, medical care and uh, society uh, economics. This figure illustrates applications of AI based methods in medical imaging approach, as there should be here uh, in the first year database, and we have and we need database machines which you can uh, transmit massive amount of data in first layer. Second layer here is developed by uh, ENN or artificial neural network selector and has the job of implementing best imaging strategies based on systems um, previous experience. Third layer um, here continues uh, the popular image-based techniques um, and the most imaging procedure by DET technique, which can identify the disease more efficient. The fourth layer here is responsible for image optimization and enhancement. And the fifth layer is designed for final diagnosis based on a safe knowledge. A deep learning techniques may be used to create a classification network that is in identifications of COVID and uh, influenza and COVID pneumonia. According to this, we listed some studies discuss the role of deep learning in the analysis of pandemic. This table illustrates the different used methods for a diagnosis or for a detection or for classifying COVID-19 and other. Disease. We listed some of these people we handled, um, as we uh, mentioned before, uh, some clinical or medical characteristics, such as clinical characteristics and risk factors of conversion between first and second wave. And the technical part is the role of technology, such as in out of science and role of artificial intelligence in fighting COVID-19. Thank you. And is there any questions? Thank you, Dr. Azahara. Very lovely presentation and paperwork. Any questions from the audience for this uh, work, please? I just have a quick question, uh, uh, if, uh, if allowed. Um, it appears on, on page 16, uh, they mentioned the first and second wave. Uh, is any uh, 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 difference in terms of uh, technology maturity uh, for handling the first and second wave of COVID-19? Yeah, when we compare between first and second wave, here we use the technical part and the symptoms and the um, Appear the cases. Um, uh, when we compare, yeah, this compression can also be applied for um, for third wave and third wave. All technology, or modern technology, can be used in this compression, in um, classification the um, uh, disease, in uh, detection the disease, in um, um, knowing when this disease can affect the, the, the body. So here, um, 
the compression is technical part as the, um, uh, sorry, technical compression is medical uh, issue and the uh, rule of technology is technical issue for dealing with compression or for dealing with this issue. All right. Any other questions? Uh, just I have very quick question, uh, Dr. Zahra. Yeah. Have you real, uh, realized any, uh, or what's the the best telesystems during this COVID among all the studies have you reviewed? Um, yes, here, um, when we um, it took uh, in detail about deep learning, we here listed some uh, studies and here we have some results about the studies and maybe here um, we have uh, is the author Ani Jupta here uh, with reference 24 in detecting pneumonia and COVID-19 using cyst X-ray uh, photography. He have achieved accuracy of uh, 20, uh, sorry, 99 and it's for three classes and uh, 90, uh, sorry, 99 and 43 on two classes. This is maybe is the highest percentage in uh, detecting um, or classifying COVID rather than other uh, studies. And then what are the criteria for these ones? Have you realized, have you checked their criteria based on why they got the accuracy of 99% or above 99%? Until now, I, I didn't arrive to uh, present rather than this. When searching in the so, different studies, uh, this is what I find in this percentage. Sure. Thank you, Doctor. Any other we questions can't. before we move the before we move on? Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Zahra and Dr. Mohammed, Dr. Ibrahim, for your lovely works and um, a very good presentation. I and uh, please just I would like to mention that uh, the graphs you are using to um, deliver the ideas during this presentation is very lovely. I like it. Thank you very much, Dr. Zahra. Thank you, Dr. Welcome. Uh, now we are going to move on to the next paper under the title Next Generation Sequence Prediction for SARS-CoV-2 Using Deep Learning Neural Networks uh, by uh, Taqwa Muhammad, Dr. Taqwa Muhammad, Dr. Sabah Saeed, uh, Akram Salah, and Isam uh, Hussein. Any one of them going to be present the paper? Was here. Yes. You are very welcome to present your paper. You can share your screen and go ahead, please. Okay.
Do you need any help, Taqwa? Uh, give me, give me a few minutes. Yeah, sure. Take your time. Uh, Dr. Muhammad, if we have another paper in line, maybe we can start the other one. We just give some minutes for Taqwa because she uh, is preparing something there and is going to be ready very soon. Thank you for your suggestion. All right. Taqwa, do you want to come back again to you later? Okay. Or are you ready? I will back later. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on to the next paper, and you will be uh, the next one after the, the one is coming. Okay? So be ready, please. Okay. The next paper is under... Uh, the title is Design and Optimization of Big Data Connection Algorithm Based on Data uh, Redundancy uh, Technology. Okay. The author, his name, uh, Win Chao Shu. Uh, this paper is going to be uh, via uh, YouTube. So I'm going to share and show the presentation via the on behalf of the author. This is design and optimization of big data connection algorithm based on data redundancy technology. The thesis mainly involves the following contents. One dot introduction to research on design and optimization of big data connection algorithm based on data elimination technology. Three dot design and optimization research experiment of big data connection algorithm based on data elimination technology. Four design and optimization research experiment analysis of big data connection algorithm based on data elimination technology. Five dot conclusions. One introduction in the 21st century when computer technology and information technology continue to accelerate development. Information has become an indispensable part of life. Life. One, two. All sectors of society rely more and more on the information industry, and information data is also showing an explosive increase. There is a large part of redundant data in these growing data. How to deal with these redundant data and reduce storage resources? The waste of data and the difficulty of data query have become an urgent problem that enterprises need to solve. Three, four. In relational databases, connection operations are the most common and the most difficult to implement. Five. The join operation is a very important operation because it can merge two data tables with the same attribute value, six. Therefore, it is worth studying to effectively optimize the redundancy and connection of multiple data sets, and it is a very meaningful research direction. Among the many big data researches, some of them are researches on connection algorithms. 
For example, some decay and ones Yoxia proposed an improved self-join algorithm based on MapReduce by analyzing the self-join redundancy in self-joining of current similar joining algorithms and the complexity of reading original strings. Adding filtering conditions in the filtering stage of the improved algorithm can eliminate its own redundancy. In the verification phase, the redundancy techniques such as positive and negative candidate pair generation and combined ID are used, and the data set only needs to be read once when reading the original string content. This article introduces the basic concepts and methods of data redundancy technology, introduces various classification methods, and analyzes and compares them. In this article, we describe the redundancy deletion algorithm from two aspects, improving the redundancy deletion rate and deleting the redundancy rate of the redundancy deletion system. This paper innovatively proposes a parallel hierarchical redundancy elimination algorithm BHD, which not only improves the data redundancy elimination rate, but also increases the redundancy elimination rate. This paper proposes an optimization strategy for index-based partition joints. For the connection method of two data tables, this paper improves the connection method of reduced side based on the idea of map side connection. When the join operation is performed in the map phase, the reduced phase can be reduced, thereby eliminating the Schifferly phase and improving efficiency. To research on design and optimization of big data connection algorithm based on data elimination technology data redundancy technology overview of data redundancy technology is the process of reducing or deleting redundant files, bytes or data fragments, thereby ensuring that only unique data is stored on the disk. 8. Data redundancy technology is an emerging technology in the storage field. It uses the same or similar data function between files or between files and automatically meets the requirements of using special calculation methods to automatically search and extract redundant data. Once the original redundant data is deleted, the data obtained is unique, so the data space occupied by the actual storage medium will be reduced and the virtual space of the storage space can be realized. 910. Classification classification based on the granularity of eliminating redundant size according to the size of the deduplication resolution. Data the redundancy technology can be divided into complete file deletion, fixed length block deletion, variable length block cancellation, and byte level cancellation. The advantage of deleting complete files is that the calculation speed is very fast. When processing a large number of files, all the same files can be detected, thus saving a lot of storage space. The advantage of eliminating fixed length block redundancy is that the algorithm is simple, the calculation speed is faster, and the data redundancy elimination rate is higher. The advantage of this variable length block deletion method is that it can effectively deal with file insertion and deletion problems, and can detect more redundant data than required. The advantage of eliminating redundancy at the byte level is that the redundancy elimination rate is relatively high, but it requires a large number of search operations, so the redundancy elimination rate is relatively slow, 11-12. Classification based on the execution order of redundancy elimination according to the time to implement redundancy elimination. It can be divided into online redundancy elimination and redundancy elimination post-processing. Online data redundancy is about eliminating data redundancy before writing data to disk. The biggest advantage of this processing method is that it is cost-effective and does not need to store redundant data sets that will eventually be deleted, thereby reducing the need for storage capacity. Post-data redundancy, also known as offline data redundancy, is the process of eliminating data redundancy after writing data to a disk. Since data redundancy is performed on a separate storage device after storage, this will not affect the entire business process, and a redundancy implementation plan can be made in the data as needed. Parallel level replacement and elimination algorithm redundancy elimination algorithm. The CDC algorithm is based on the content of the file and uses rabbi fingerprints to divide the file into data blocks. This is a flexible block deletion method designed to understand that long blocks are sensitive to operations such as file insertion and deletion. Hierarchical HD algorithm for eliminating redundancy. The specific implementation of the hierarchical elimination of the redundancy elimination algorithm is to first use the CDC elimination algorithm to eliminate the redundancy at the data block level, and then use the set compression algorithm to eliminate the byte level redundancy. After the redundancy level is eliminated from course to fine, a large amount of redundant data can be effectively deleted to obtain a better detail duplication rate parallel hierarchical redundancy elimination bhd algorithm dot the parallel hierarchical redundancy elimination algorithm is realized by introducing parallel computing on the basis of the hierarchical redundancy elimination algorithm the core idea of the phd algorithm is to use multi-threaded concurrent processing of data blocks and data encoding compression in hierarchical redundancy elimination which will reduce this part of the time overhead and increase deduplication under the premise of higher deduplication rate map reduce working principle in the map phase. The input file is sliced first, and then the sliced result is passed to the mapper node, and then the key value pair after slice analysis is passed as an input parameter to the user-defined map function. After the map function is processed, 
The output is intermediate the result key value pair. After executing the mapping function, sort the intermediate result set, divide it and send it to the reduce node dot in the reduce phase. Each key value pair returned by the map is passed as a parameter to the user defined reduce function. And after the logical calculation of reduce, the result is finally obtained. An output to HDFS, job execution process, job submission and initialization. Start a job on the client and make a request to the job tracker. After the job tracker receives the request, it will assign a job ID to the requested job. At the same time, the client also needs to submit the job information to the job tracker. Task scheduling and monitoring task tracker that performs the task will periodically send a heartbeat to the job tracker to inform the job tracker that it is still running. Preparation of task operating environment. Preparation of the operating environment includes JVM startup and resources and isolation which are all implemented by task tracker dot task execution dot after task tracker prepares the running environment for the task it will start the task the job is completed dot after all tasks are executed the entire job is executed successfully dot connection query processing technology based on map reduce module connection algorithm on the reduce side dot the reduction edge connection method is one of the simplest connection methods the main design idea is in the map initialization phase read all the source data uniformly the key value output by the map is the value corresponding to the join field, and the output value is the value of each record. For each field value, in order to accurately distinguish the data source, you need to add an identification value to each field. Compared with ordinary map reduce tasks, the value of the map output during the join operation is more marked with a tag. In the first stage of reduce, the reduce function needs to obtain the value list corresponding to the source label key and group the value list according to the source label, and finally perform the Cartesian product on the input, which means that the actual connection operation can be performed in the reduce second the stage begins to execute dot connection algorithm on the map side dot in the connection algorithm on the map side, there is a five sets of different data from TPC DS for testing, for design and optimization research experiment analysis of big data connection algorithm based on data elimination technology redundancy algorithm simulation under the condition that the redundancy rate is 60%. The comparison of Hey, Dr. Mohammed, I suggest we skip this one. This is terrible. It's shown in table one. It can be seen. Yes. One that will, the redundancy I think rate so. Is 60%. I recommend the same. So, well, once everyone uh, wants to move from uh, this paper, uh, then we can move on. Yeah, it's already uploaded online. So anyone want to watch it, he can go and watch it anytime. Sure, Dr. Muhammad. So we can uh, now go back to Taqwa. Are you ready now? Okay. Go ahead and sh share your screen and good luck. I am Taqwa Muhammad, teaching assistant at Faculty of Computers and Information, Mini University, Egypt. Uh, I will present to you a presentation on my research titled The Next Generation Sequence Prediction Intelligent System for Source COVID 2 Using Deep Learning in Neural Network. Agenda Introduction Literature Review Research Methodology uh, Data Collecting Proposed Algorithm uh, Proposed Work Pre Processing Phase proposed prediction model results references. Introduction. In December 2019, cases of unknown causes of pneumonia appeared in Wuhan, China. Investigations into the outbreak and genetic sequencing have revealed that the novel coronavirus is a causative agent. The disease has spread rapidly and has affected millions of people and the populations worldwide. On January 2020, the genetic sequence of SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus that causes the disease called COVID-19, was published. The first outbreak in the United States of America was in the state of Washington on the west coast of the United States of America and has been attributed to the Chinese origin of the virus. While recent, st recent studies have found that the outbreak more intense in New York State is located on the east coast of the United States, it's a source of COVID-2 virus of European origin. The only significant 
The only significant difference from the SARS-CoV-2 viral involved protein, which carries out host cells the glycoprotein maintained viral binding and subsequent fusion of the virus and host cells members is a mutation in a separate D in position 614, which is approximately present. The ability to analyze the RNA virus from minimally in invasive samples is critical to a public health. Next generation sequencing offers an opportunity to detect SARS CoV 2 from mutations. The young team in China was the first group to, to, do to, uh, to determine the full length genomic sequence of the SARS CoV 2 virus. Scientists from different countries have obtained and uploaded more than 100 full or, par uh, or partial genomic sequence from SARS CoV 2. No specific vaccines or drug can cure the disease. However, there are huge efforts underway around the world in this direction. According to the reports of uh, SARS-CoV-2, originated in bats and transmitted to human by binoculans as intermediate hosts, the viral genome goes through several mutations in the spike protein to be able to infect a new mammalian host. In a study on the panel of neutralized and infective T and reactive T antibodies and serum from coronavirus patients reported about the mutations and, gly and, glyco and glycolation site modification in human SARS CoV 2 spike protein, few of these mutations have been reported in the spike gly glycoprotein. This study is to predict all mutations presented in the human source cov 2 spike proteins relative to Han HU1 reference from uh, H1 uh, reference for, uh, sequence from China. Literature review. Scientists around the world continue for searching for new technologies to support in processing the COVID-19 pandemic, evidence for machine learning and artificial intelligence application on the previous epidemic encourages res researchers to give a new direction to fighting the, new uh, the novel coronavirus. The paper titled COVID-19 Automatic Detection from X-ray Images Utilizing Transfer Learning with a Convolutional con Neural Network published in Physical and Engineering Sciences in Medicine 2020. They proposed a deep learning based, uh, based technique called Deep Transfer Learning, which can predict patients with coronavirus disease automatically. It uses X-ray images taken from coronavirus patients, patients and healthy persons. The paper titled the uh, time series analysis and forecast of the COVID-19 pandemic in India using genetic programming, published in Science Direct 2020. Models in this article based on genetic programming have been developed to predict the total confirmed cases and the total disease in hard hit countries of India, as well as total India. They have detailed that the model is less delicate to have, uh, to have the variables, but is exceeding exceedingly dependable with the confirmed cases and the disease prediction. The paper titled COVID-19 transmission in machine in mainland China is associated with the temperature and the humidity uh, published in Science of the Total Environment 2020. They have used the generalized adaptive model for the associations of the average of daily temperature and relative humidity with the daily cases of COVID-19 in different previous, um, in different in China, zero study found that the increase in the daily average temperature and with the increase the average uh, relative humidity decreased the COVID-19 cases. However, there are nuclear trends for the COVID-19 cases throughout mainland China. The paper titled the Machine Learning Approach for Confirmation of COVID-19 Cases, Positive, Negative, Deaths, and Release, published in Medrex 2020, they sought to predict the confirmed release the negative death cases of COVID-19 pandemic using LSTM, Graded Recurrent Unit, Recurrent Neural Networks, 
Their study proved that the combination of LSTM and RNN model provided a better protection from the other individual models. The paper, the paper titled Protection of the Spread of COVID-19 in India and Effectiveness of Preventive Measures published in Science of the Total Environment 2020. They have used LSTM and curve fitting to protect the COVID-19 cases number in India for 30 days ahead and the preventive measure of effect like lockdowns and social distancing and COVID-19 and COVID-19 is but the results clear the social distancing and implementation of lockdown importance. Actually, the daily cases number decreased as the LSTM and fitting methods curve expectation. The paper titled COVID-19 infection forecasting based on deep learning in Iran, published in Medrex of 2020, they utilized RNN, LSTM, seasonal autoregressive auto integrated moving average and halt winter, winter's exponential smoothing and moving average strategies to protect to predict Iran COVID-19 cases. Their studies proved that LSTM model results list error value for Iran infection development from other models. Research methodology. Data collecting. This study presents a proof of concept by applying this technique on two different data set. The first data set is source COVID-2 data set. The source COVID-2 spike protein sequences were obtained in the first format from the NCPI virus database. The samples was collected on May 2021. Uh, the all samples uh, is 30, 23, and the number of training samples is um, 24 and, eight, uh, and 18. The number of uh, evaluation samples is um, 605, and the sequence length is 12 and 73. The second data set is HIV virus data set. The HIV involved the glycoprotein sequences were obtained in the first format from the NCPI virus database, and the all samples is 12 and 19. The uh, number of training samples is 975. The number of evaluation samples and, uh, is um, 244, and the sequence length is 479. Proposed algorithm. The sequence, sequence LSTM architecture is an encoder decoder uh, architecture, which consists of two LSTM networks the encoder LSTM and the decoder LSTM. The LSTM cell takes an, an input in the form of the one hot encoded version at um, position, as well as two recurrent states the hidden state and the cell state that are vectors with predetermined dimensions. These states and the input are regulated by trainable input. Each LSTM. Excuse me. Oh. You can just uh, yes. rise and drop up in three minutes, please. Three minute lifts. Okay. Proposed work. The model concludes four main phases, pre-processing, one-hot encoding, encoder, decoder. In the pre-processing phase, using application of a translation algorithm to biological data by transforming protein sequences into words with a fixed size, each word is a nucleotide. The next step is tokenizing the protein sequences. It divides a sentence into the corresponding list of words. Next, the input will be padded as the input and uh, the output in varying lengths. In this manner, uh, the sentence are changed into fixed length vectors. The proposed prediction model 
The proposed LSTM model is composed of connected LSTM encoder and decoder. Input sequence is given as input to the encoder. Each LSTM cell takes information as input from previously cell in the form of a hidden state vector and cell state vector and combines it with the one hot encoding. The output of the encoder is the concatenation of the hidden and cell state vectors in the decoder. Each cell receives an input in the one hot encoded version. And the previous words of the next generation generated by the model, as well as the hidden state and the cell state vectors from the previous cell, it passes these two vectors after updating them to the next cell but also feeds the hidden state vector to the dense layer, output layer, which output a probability distribution over next generation world at, the, at that position. A soft max function is applied to obtain probability distribution to reduce overfitting. Early stopping is used to end the training when the validation loss didn't decrease. Results to evaluate the prediction performance for different test cases to measure uh, used, uh, used accuracy and loose function. Uh, the results looks, uh, look uh, prom promising. The model scored accuracy uh, minus seven for HIV virus and twenty uh, and ninety nine point six for coronavirus strain. And this is the HIV data set results, accuracy and loss function. And the source COVID-2 data set results is um, accuracy and loss function. Thank you. Thank you, Takwa. Very good works and uh, very appreciate your presentation. We would like to open the questions for anyone would like to ask uh, Takwa for her works. Any questions? Well, I think you no know, any questions are coming up from the audience. So I would like to thank you, Takwa, for your presentation and for your good works in your paper. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now we are going to move on. We have uh, only three papers left. Uh, the next paper uh, is the title Comparison and Analysis of Different uh, consensus uh, consensus methods in blockchain bl platforms uh, with uh, Andre or by Andre and uh, our uh, Irakli and uh, Baktang. Any one of them are here to present their paper? Andre. Okay, Andre, I think he doesn't. Dr. Muhammad, he, uh, they, they, yes, okay. yes, he's here. Okay, I sent them the new link uh, like a few minutes ago, but they didn't reply. Mm -hmm. So I think they have a problem uh, joining the uh, the session online, and they sent a link for a pre-recorded video, which we will we are going to upload them to the uh, YouTube channel. So uh, they have two papers, I think, in this session. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so there is one remaining paper now. So if the authors are ready, they can go ahead and present. Sure. Uh, then the last paper we have here uh, is the, uh, under the uh, title is um, Eradicating Physical Security Concerns by Using Blockchain Technology by uh, Dharani Chandana and uh, Anusha, uh, Anusha and Sita. Any one of them are here? I think uh, Dr. Mohammed, um, even though they are not showing up in this session, this paper. Yeah, I think for this paper, I think they presented in different session because- uh, Oh, really? Due to the technical problem in the, in the beginning of this session, they moved to session four, I think, or something. 
Sure. I just put some notes here and I'll let you know later. Uh, okay. As shown I will, on the note. I will check all videos uh, at the end of the day. Sure. At the end of this session, I would like uh, to uh, um, say sorry on behalf of the uh, conference committee for the delay and for the technical problems. And at the same time, I'd like to say thank you for everyone is presenting uh, their uh, works uh, in this session uh, or attending uh, this session. Um, wish you all the best and uh, wish to meet you in the uh, any uh, any coming um, uh, conference or any other um, uh, works to um, to see you and to uh, show the other works. Thank you very much and uh, wish you to enjoy uh, in the other sessions uh, uh, during these two days in the conference. And uh, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.